So anyway, let's talk about Blood Feud, which stars Robert Blake. It was a TV movie being made for something they called Operation Primetime, and it was um, locally, like, syndicated. So it was, like, on Channel 13 or one of those things. And um, But it, it was a big deal because it was the first Operation Primetime movie, so they put some money into it. And with Blake, he had a reputation from Beretta, this is post-Beretta, for being difficult. And so in order to cast him as Jimmy Hoffa, which he very much wanted to do, he had to agree to put his money in escrow. And he would get his money at the end of the shoot if he behaved. <laughs> you know, how else do you control Robert Blake? Put his money in escrow. So they do that. And it's the first day or so, maybe the second day, that I am scheduled to pick him up and take him to the stage with me way early in the morning. So I figure I'll just pick him up in my car. I've got a decent car. And he and I will ride to the studio, and it saves me going into the studio, getting a car, driving back out where I have to pass anyway, and then coming back in with Robert Blake. So I pick him up, and he's in the back, chewing tobacco. But instead of really handling it right, dealing with it, he doesn't have a cup or anything. I think he can spit out the window. No, he spits on my carpet in the back. Ding! Ding! As we're driving along. I couldn't believe that this is what was happening. Great, now I gotta clean my car afterward. So we get to the studio, and I'm none too happy with what's going on. But in addition to that, we had instructions to carry around when we went on location a Robert Blake mattress, specifically. And it lived in the back of one of the trucks. And when we were on location, he'd pull it out when he needed to fix his back, which was terrible. And on stage, they had it hanging around. So all of us were cognizant of Robert Blake's back. And he had an assistant that was a rather large lady. And I pull up to the stage after picking him up and I drop him off and I go to park where I have to park, which is a ways away from the stage. So I park my car and now I'm walking back toward the stage. And I can see one of the lowly production assistants pointing to one of the extras dressing rooms. And what is the difference? The difference is caliber of the dressing room and the way they're set up. A star's dressing room has multiple points on the ground so that it's very stable. An extras dressing room needs to be set up with jacks that stabilize it. Otherwise, it's just a single axle and, you know, the thing is all over the place if it's not jacked. So he points Blake to one of the extras trailers, which just happened to be being stored up there. And his assistant goes with him to the trailer. And at this stage area at Fox, there's a huge downcline to an oil well field. And that's where they stack the dressing rooms that are out of the way and not being used. But now Blake is headed to this one with his assistant. I can see what's going to happen, but I can't stop it. I'm too far away. I can't go screaming, wait, wait, wait. So he gets into the trailer seems okay for the moment. His large assistant gets in, 
And I can only imagine that they both walk to where the back where the A bed is. Not his bed, but A bed. And the thing tilts up and goes down the ravine to the oil well, which is about 30 feet down. And I'm watching in horror as Blake, with his back with his assistant, are careening down the hill, unstoppable until the thing reaches the oil field. And now Blake is pulling at like trees and weeds and you know, whatever, as he and his assistant are climbing back up the ravine to get back to the stage area and, and Blake gets up there. And in his hair is like stuck hay and stuff and just, you know, he just has been effed up in this voyage. And I'm just beside myself with how funny this is to see what's happened. But you can't laugh, you know. So I carry that story with me, or that visual with me, until the rap party. And at the rap party, I figured now is the time to ask him what was that like, right? What happened inside that trailer? And he's not an easy guy to, like talk with but I circle up find him getting close to him ask him what was that like he said when the thing went down the hill his assistant went flying and as he was just laying down on the bed she landed on top of him as the thing careened down the hill and ultimately it took them you know 30 seconds or so to unravel each other and Hoist and they're at an angle, you know, so you can't really get up and there's only one door. And, uh, wow. But you know what? He took it <coughs> pretty well. He didn't sacrifice his escrow money. That's for sure. We had a bunch of bomb threats from the Teamsters, which was ironic because, of course, I was a Teamster. am a Teamster, whatever you want to say. And uh, we were making the story of Hoffa and Ken, Bobby Kennedy. And so they didn't know anything about the script, but they weren't happy no matter what because it's about Hoffa and they want his legacy to be left alone. So we had bomb threats on a semi-regular basis and it became almost humorous outside of that it was serious effing business. And we'd get these calls there's a bomb threat here, there's a bomb threat there, and the police would come out and it would interrupt everything, and they knew that. They knew that in the production schedule, it would hurt everything if they had to do bomb surges. So we called the Teamsters and said, look, you guys are destroying this thing, and it's a positive story about Hoffa. He's in charge the whole way. And then they stop presenting bomb threats and let us do our work. And that's how we finally dealt with it. The police couldn't stop it. We managed to stop it as Teamsters made me a phone call. So we're filming at the Ambassador Hotel. It's the scene is like Hoffa has just won yet another election as the Teamster head. And it takes place in the ballroom with all these signs. And I mean, it was really amazing. So I'm wandering around and I go through this door thinking I'm going outside and it's the kitchen where Robert Kennedy was shot. And you look around and it's so ingrained in my memory. I'm like, whoa, this is where it actually happened. And it was a very spooky feeling. And one I couldn't shake, and I remember it to this day. It was just really awful. What a place to die. So one last story about Blood Feud, and that is an odd story and, you know, just one of those weird things. The scene is that a garbage truck circa 1950 is moving through an alleyway that has trash and it's being picked up and laid down. 
And it's right outside a church called, the alleyway it was called a, a, to a homeless toilet. So they had made a decree that the trash that was put out by set dressing would go into the trash truck and you know, take the movie trash out. A foul one somehow happens. And the trash truck is dismissed, not by me, by the way, and leaves the movie trash. So instead of it picking up the trash and taking it away, it's now gone and the trash truck is gone and now they're trying to strike the trash and they can't because the trash truck that's only capable of hauling something that big away. So they're going to come back the next day. Strike the trash. I show up the next morning like, you know, early. And the producer comes over and says, did you hear what happened at the church? I said, no, what happened? said a fire broke out in the alleyway that we were filming in and it burnt the whole side of this cherished church that you know was like on the list of historic places and now it's our fault and and the s hits the van Everybody at Fox is getting phone calls from everybody. The city fathers, the this and that. There's an investigation. Why was there a fire? What they find out is that the homeless guys are smoking back there, right? And throwing it on the ground where our trash is. That catches fire. That sets the place on fire. That burns down part of the historic church. And now they want someone to answer for it. And Fox ends up on the hook for rebuilding the church, for redoing the area, for the whole thing. And they got uh, chastised. And they got called out in public. And I just was like, oh, man. And everybody was called in on a meeting of how the trash caught fire. And uh, we teamsters with the trash truck were right in the middle. Although, I told them, someone dismissed it, take it up with them. That's him right over there, that dude.